Hi, it's Faceless Tech. Oh my god, this has been a long time coming, this project. It's been working on it since June, and it's now November, So, uh, but I love the way it's come out. What it is, if you haven't figured out already, is a Raspberry Pi camera. Um, it's got uh, not only a night, it's not only a camera, it's a night vision camera. It's got uh, an, uh, a camera module on the front with the IR film taken off with two, um, sell it as a kit, with two uh, IR LEDs. These little sensors, uh, light sensors for self-regulating. And if you're covering up there, you can see it's come on. So when it's dark, it'll come on when it's not, but not. So it's great for power saving. Um, and then it's got on the back, it's got a uh, screen, which is one of these 3.2 inch wave share clone screens with the uh, buttons on the side, which are great for prototyping. And they only cost about eight pounds on eBay, eight, nine pounds. Uh, and then what's powering it all is this Xiaomi power bank board, which is great. It's a replacement power bank board for their power banks, but I'm using it. Uh, and then also there's a Raspberry Pi uh, Zero W inside as a part. So I was originally using uh, this screen here with a Raspberry Pi 2 set up. Um, and it was drawing a lot of power uh, with the two LEDs on the front of the night vision camera because they are when they are on full, but it draws about one and a half amps to two amps. So I was using a power bank that was barely keeping up. And I thought, what can I do? I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll just switch to a zero. So we switch to a zero and it kind of was a little bit underpowered, but um, it also wasn't very high power draining. So I got, got away with it in the end. Um, also the reason for this lag on the screen, is if you look, is um, because I'm using uh, Pi game to do a frame buffer. Because the, the way the Python camera works is basically just chucks the camera to the HDMI uh, cable. So I had to capture it with a frame buffer. And also with the frame buffer, it allowed me to have a bigger image and scale it down for the screen. But also meant that it introduced quite a lot of lag. It was four times the size of the screen, which is a 320 by 480, I think. Um, so, you know, it has its, has its advantages. Uh, what else we've got on there is a button on the top, which is taking pictures. This to start and stop recording. This little the little switch is used for the button on the power bank board because the way the switch is wired up is uh, the battery is disconnected from the board, and then when you switch over, um, and then when you, you just need a little coaxing, you need a little press of the button, and then the power bank will crack into action. Then <coughs> also. Um, I've got, as you notice down here, there is um, the uh, battery percentage. I'm using um, a analog uh, to digital uh, reader mode from Adafruit because, the, as you know, the Raspberry Pi has no analog uh, sensing pins, so um, that's quite good. And that's why I needed to isolate the battery as well with this switch. Um, also, I've got around here is a couple of LEDs. I've got one up here for the status of the Raspberry Pi. Um, the uh, ACT light. Uh, that's also used for when you want to close it down, you have to wait for the 10 flashes and then to turn it off. But these down here are broken out from the from the power bank board. This bottom one is the red one, which is low battery. Uh, and then the top one, which is the green one on the top, is none, which is full battery. These are also used for charging as well, you know, when it's charging, because it'll um, be blinking, and then when it stops blinking, the top one, you know, it's charged then, which is charged through this micro USB port. This panel bank, uh, panel mount. Right on the other side, as you noticed, I've got a full-size USB port that's broken out from the OTG. And I've also wrote um, software, this little on-screen button that you can press, and that means you can disconnect, which also brings you around to how to get the pictures off it. If you've got the pictures off it, you hook it in this, which is a full-size uh, USB port to USB, um, USB-C. So you can plug this into your phone and you can tweet your pictures or upload them or do whatever you want with them. And also it means instead of having an SD card, you have to SSH in or however you want to do it. Um, you can just plug it in and it also means you can plug any flash drive you want into it and it'll work. There's a bit of a, if you look on the GitHub, it'll show you how to, um, if you look for the code, it'll show you how I've done it. It's a bit of a hacky way, but it works. There you go, you can disconnect it for any flash drive you want in it, including a hard drive if you wanted to. Um, I did have um, a few other issues with the uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, with the Python PY, because I was saying before, with the um, having to use the frame buffer in the PY game, but that also allowed me to do the whole interface and uh, all the buttons and everything else, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, as usual, the uh, links will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!
There's a shut down button. Is it going to shut down? And oh, there it is, shutting it down. See, thanks for watching.